kutunga mira ni baba wanapona
Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Then we introduced the basics, worship, then the word. We are talking about your role as a church member. Something is not well with the sound today. Your role as a church member. If you can flight that, what is your role as a church member? Because this is a new church, so we must inject in what we call fundamentals in faith. Your role as a church member. There are seven key roles there as a church member. Please talk to the person sitting next to you, say, I'm a church member. Right. Your first role as a church member is to be a faithful attendee. To be a faithful attendee. Decide to attend all, if not most, services, meetings, and most of the programs organized by church. That's the key thing there that you should endeavor to do. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 2 says, Faithful, being constant, regular, reliable, dedicated, committed. You will find that word faithful, that it has all these connotations or meanings. So your first role in the church is that you are a faithful attendee. Here's the second role. Your second role in the church is that of a stable Christian. Not a, a narrative Christian, but a very stable Christian. Decide that you'll be stable and somebody can count on you looking at your stability. Therefore, you must be planted in a local church. Planted, planted in a local church. Make it your top priority that you belong. Please say it with me. Say, I belong. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 13. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. When you are planted, you have no choice but to flourish in the house of God. Number three, your third, third role is to pay your tithes. When you are a member of a church, you pay your tithes. You say, but I'm a student, I'm not working. It does not matter. Tithes relates to income. If someone gives you a dollar, if you want to be faithful in God, 10 cents goes to the Lord. Not that he needs it, but you need that blessing that comes from obeying the word of the Lord. So teach yourself early. If you can't tithe on a 10 cents, it will be very difficult to tithe on an income of 1 million, which is 100,000 US dollars. God will try you on small areas to ascertain your faithfulness down the line. I've been a tither for many, many years. I have never regretted that I'm a tither. Tithing will always bless you. Bless you, the tither. Make sure that the 90% that remains with you is covered and blessed and there's no case on it. It's a wise thing to tithe because then God takes the 90% that you remain with, takes it longer. So if you're going to be a true member of the church, Tithing, therefore, becomes key. You can't say I belong when you don't tithe. Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Tithing means you are honoring the Lord. Watch Malachi 3, the verses 10 there. It reads, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. What is meat? 
The preaching of the word of God is meat. Meat in the house. And prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it in your life. The tithe therefore supports the church. The church is supported by tithes and offerings. Paying of bills, paying of lights, anything else, the Levites that work in the house of God, all that comes from tithing, that's how a church is sustained. Don't listen to any fool that says tithing is of the Old Testament. They don't know their Bible. Even in the New Testament, Jesus himself talks about tithing. And tithing is key. He doesn't need your money, but you need his blessings. And one of the conduits or the way to open up a blessing in your life is to be a tither so that you don't live under cases. Say amen. That's what we call membership. Number four, your fourth role is to give offerings. You notice there's a big difference there between your tithe. Tithe is 10% of your income. Offerings is your free will offering. As you will, you take out an offering and give it to God. Luke 6 verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you a good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with her, it shall be measured to you again. Lift up your hands and say, Lord Jesus, teach me to be a giver. Number five, your fifth role is to make your talents and gifts available to the church. That's a key thing. These people up here are giving of their talents so that they are valuable in church. The ushers that you see around here are giving of their talents that they are valuable in church. I am holding a microphone here. I am hopefully giving of my talent so that you and I benefit. So we need one another. We depend on one another. It's called interdependence. You need me, I need you. And together we make the church of the living God. Say amen. So put your God-given abilities to full use in the house of God. Don't be found sitting down when you have a skill, a talent that we can use. If you can sing, please join music. If you can play an instrument, join the instrumentalist. If you think you can usher, be an usher. If you think you can teach our children's ministry and you are gifted that way, please do so. If you think you can um, pray, please join us to pray. If you can think you can uh, function in media, ICT, please join us. We have over 50 departments here. Our churches run with so many departments in the house of the Lord. So you can do something. If you don't want to backslide in the things of God, be found participating in Jesus' name. Please ask your neighbor and say, what do you do in church? What do you do? Look, we meet here. We met here yesterday, Saturday, evangelism. We spent two hours in the streets evangelizing. We are participating in the house of God. It's very easy to gossip, to criticize when you are not participating. Once you get to participate, you'll find that you, your mouth is shut. It's very easy to Talk about someone who's trying to lead prayer here. And he say, oh, they can't lead prayer. Let us put you here for one month, one, one minute. You will see that it's very difficult to stand before people and say something. It's very easy to look at me and say, and you come here and preach for an hour. And let's see whether you can preach. So participation, therefore, makes you get involved. And when you get involved, you talk less. Say, Amen. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, We are Kuruma Kuruma Bawens, Lutel Tidienkos. Talk to them in Devil and say, We are near Gakul and Kosini. Over you are doing nothing, nothing, nothing. No, next time you hear someone talking, say, Ukuruma Kuruma Bawens, Lutoen. Once you are in the, have you never seen spectators watching Man U and Man City? 
if a player misses, oh, yeah, we had this. Uh, or you get in there yourself, you notice how difficult it is. Even to miss a sitter itself, something that's given to you and anybody can score. But when under pressure, things are different. So participation. Talk to your neighbor and say, participate, participate, participate. We need all of us participating in the house of God. Don't hide your abilities. Give them to God. He will anoint you and therefore you will increase. Ro roll, uh, point number six. I'm saying roll number six. Point number six. Your sixth role is to know your pastors. Love them and respect them. Know your pastors. Love them and respect them. Why? Because you can't receive from anyone that you don't love, that you don't respect, that you don't honor. The principles of receiving, if you are to receive anything from me, honor must be there. Otherwise, there is nothing that comes. The things of God function with honor. The more you love somebody, the more you are in a position to receive. Say amen. Lift up your hands and say, I'm ready to receive. Say it one more time. I'm ready to receive. Yeah, but for you to receive, you must be in this position or that posture of being able to respect, to love, and to honor. First Thessalonians 5, verse 2. It reads, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord. And we admonish you, those that will admonish you. So to know them, honor them, respect them, love them, as well as pray for those that are above you, that lead you. They need your prayers. Okay, the second thing, be there, is respect, which we have talked about. Okay, respect. First Thessalonians 5, 13. And the word is, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. When you esteem someone, you hold them in high regards. You are esteeming someone. You are not saying, Gunjan, when I'm talawin. You are not esteeming someone. Okay, when you esteem something, you hold it in right regards and you are bound to receive from it. Those are the principles of God. Say, Amen. They see, they're still on point number five. They see, believe in your pastors. Believe in them. Believe in them that they mean good for you. If you are suspicious of them, if you are second guessing them, you will find that you stop receiving in a church. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. Hear me O Judah. And it goes on to say, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, in his apostles, in his evangelists and pastors and teachers and it says, so shall you prosper. So your prosperity has a correlation, has a, has a, is a function of how you honor, how you respect, how you believe in your leaders. And therefore, you begin to prosper that way in the name of Jesus. Our churches are full of honor. We honor pastors. We honor our leaders. You see them carrying Bibles for us. It's not that we don't want to carry our Bibles. We love that. No. It is the honor that we want to create in these so that down the line, there will be honorable men too. Say amen. If you don't honor, no one can honor you in life. Teach yourself to honor. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I may not know you, but I honor you. Say it again. Say, I may not know you, but I honor you. Society today is full of dishonor. When you are full of dishonor, God can't anoint you. God will always anoint people carrying honor within themselves. Honor the elderly. If you're in a bus, public transport, you see someone elderly coming in, stand up for them if you're young. Or a mother or a lady who is expecting, stand up for them. It's very important that you do that. Once you honor, you attract the anointing of God. Say amen. Don't talk back to an elderly person and shout at them. You are making a mistake. 
They carry a certain authority. They may not be born again, but something with us, something dies within you if you fail to honor. Say amen. I see many young people here. Honor becomes key in Jesus' mighty name. So believe in those that are set by God and you will find that you will prosper. D, pray for your pastors. First Thessalonians 5.22 Brethren, pray for us. Bazalwane, pray for us. Pray for us, brethren. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 1 Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Hebrews 13 verse 18. Again the apostle Paul continues hammering the same point. Pray for us. We trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. Pray for us. Pray for your leaders. Pray for the other saints in the house of God. Say amen. Number seven. Your seventh role is to bear fruit in Christ. How do you bear fruit in Christ? When you are participating, when you are connected, then you bear fruit. It's pointless to come to church week in, week out, and there is no fruit in your life. John 15, verse 16. Are you engrafted? Are you connected to the vine? When you are connected to the vine, you find that you have no choice but to bear fruit. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit should remain. That whosoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. Or rather, whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name. He may give it to you. The key to answered prayer is being connected to the Father. And therefore bearing fruit. If you are not bearing fruit, therefore you are disconnected one way or the other. Matthew 6 verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I want you to stand up for a few minutes. Please if you can. Next week midweek this we will be issuing out forms this coming week. These forms are what we call membership forms to establish your commitment just forms that you will fill in next week that will tell us whether you are a member or you are a continual visitor that way we know where we are going with you and where we are going with you ask your neighbor are you a member or a tourist mm -hmm. ask them please and say are you a member or not? Hmm. Membership of a church is key. And therefore, if you are going to be a member, we expect you to live by those things, adhere to those things, be a tither, good offering, attendee of the church. Okay, make sure you attend the church. That way we know where you are going with you. In a church full of tourists and visitors perpetually, you go nowhere. Believe you me, I've been a pastor of many churches for a long time. So this too is key. So I'm a form next week. Tell you about my form next week. Bring a pen and a paper. Okay. End of this month, which is March, we will be opening more cell groups in different suburbs. Maybe more so more this side in the low density suburbs as well as if you happen to live in the high density suburb. But we want to do that after knowing that yes, this one is a member, that one is a member, that one is a member. Then we can ask for your home midweek for an hour or so to use that home, bring in our leaders, gather in your homes and then we can teach you. We notice that the time between Sunday to Sunday can never sustain a Christian. So we want to be in your homes and teaching you only the people around that suburb will attend that cell group and then you have a cell group leader who pastors you during the week. 
People fall away because there is no pastoral work during the week. People are sick and no one gets to know because they don't belong to a cell group. And people go through problems and no one gets to know because there are no cell groups. Cell groups and therefore cell leaders become pastors during the week. They pastor you and they nurture you during the week. How many are ready for cell groups to open up? Lift up your hands. How many don't care? Mm, how many are ready for cell groups to lift up? There. Okay. Most of you nurse students, I think, as well as hillside students, you are going to come here on a, on a, on a Thursday. Yeah. Not this week starting, the following week. Okay. You will walk up here. You will use this place because you are quite a number of you. You will use this. And all others, we will get to establish who stays where and get to know which home groups we can open. If the home is yours, you, are the, you have the final say. So if you are a student or a child, you would have to ask your parents. If your parents say yes, then we can come in and stay. Once you say that big church there, everybody will know about the big church. I am sure they will prefer or they would love the people from this big church to come down there and begin to share the word of God with them. Say amen. The big church, say amen. So that's what we'll be doing. We're tightening up now, making sure things are tight and making sure that we get to know members of the church, make sure that you get to know your commitment to the church and so forth. All right, here is it as we pick up. We started with teaching on salvation during these short teachings. After that, we went on to water baptism. We baptized some people. Thereafter, we went on to baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we did so. Thereafter, we went on to reading the word. And we hope you are reading the Bible daily. And then we went on to prayer. Now we are talking of membership of the church. It is crucial to do that. It is crucial to function with those that belong. Say amen. Please take your seats. Can I therefore give you homework? Those that stay with parents, go and ask. Bishop Nyati wants to establish a home group that meets once on Wednesday for an hour or so between 6 and 7. Mom, do you agree that we establish a home group? If your mom says yes, come back here next week. We will then establish a cell group. If your home is yours, ask each other spouses, can we allow the church to open a home group here? And then if they say yes, we will allocate leaders that come to you. So next week, as we issue out forms, we will establish which homes we can use. Say amen. Right. Okay. We are now ready for worship today. But before we do that, we want to pay dedicated baby. I see the room is here with the family here. I am introducing a new declaration this week. Backslide. Please give me the form. Give me the certificate. Thank you. Are they here? Oh, they came in here and left. No, they're here. Are you looking for the husband? Oh. Don't worry, don't panic, we'll wait for him. Hey, wherever he is, he may be in the loo, we'll wait for him. Okay. We're dedicating a baby here today. And baby dedication, Amani Malakai Tafara Nderume. I think we did dedicate this baby. Did we dedicate Malakai? Huh? We didn't. There was a Malakai that I dedicated sometime when we were there. Okay. So... That's our job to do that. If you have never been dedicated and you are old, we can just pray you in and pray God's hand, God's blessing over your life. But baby dedication is not for salvation. Babies can't be saved in the sense that they don't make their choices. But it is to surrender them like Samuel was surrendered by Hannah, her mother to the Lord. That down the line at the right age, uh, Malachi here, will be able to make a decision and give his life to God and the protection and the hand of God over their lives. 
So if you have a baby, whether a baby in wedlock or out of wedlock, you need the baby to be dedicated. We are able to dedicate the baby here and give you a certificate like this one. But when the room, you had run away or, or sorry? <laughs> All right. Were you in the loo? It's allowed to say I was in the loo. All of us go to the loo. Me, if I feel pressed, I will leave you here. Put the microphone down and tell you I'm going to the toilet. I'm coming back. I have nothing to impress you with. So everybody goes to the toilet. Is that not so? Okay. Where did you find him, <laughs> All right. Please do come. Do come with your family today. And the supporters of uh, this big family here, please do come. Hey, it seems everybody is supporting. You want to face this way, please? Yeah, thank you. Who is uh, this pretty lady here? That's your mom. Your mom in law. That's the mother to your wife. Mm. Wow. Other than these that I know here, any members of your family other than your wife and your mom? Uh, your sister was she her sister. Like yeah, that's fine. But you have others here that are around you. That's very important. But when Jesus, Mark 10, verse 14, you're taking photos, don't you? But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Allow or let it little children come to me and do not forbid them. Don't stop the little children coming to Jesus. For such is the kingdom of God. We're dedicating here the first name is Amani, Malachi, Tafara, Derume. Hey! Loaded names here. Is this the last baby or, or another baby is coming? You think it is? Amani, Malakai, Tafara. And of course, the final name, the family name, Derume. All right. Thank you, Mom. Mom speaks Shona on the way. Tafara, may God bless you, Mom. Wow. What a beautiful baby. The coloring is of the mother. <laughs> Please extend your hands. Let's pray. Father, you say in your word to allow little kids to come unto you. For such is your kingdom. We lay our hands upon Malachi here. We commend him into your own hands. That the anointing and the grace of God will be strong upon him. In the name of Jesus Christ. That he, though he may deviate here and there but he will stay the course that your hand will be strong over him that you will keep him and watch over him and that he will save you with all his might with all his mind in the name of Jesus Christ like Samuel dedicated to the house of God we dedicate Malachi before you we thank you dear God that no weapon designed fashion formed against him shall ever prosper we pray Lord for the grandmother as well that the wisdom of God will be her portion we pray for the parents that you grant them the wisdom to raise this child in the ways of the Lord. We pray for the siblings too, that the grace of God will be mighty and strong. We pray for these supporters that have stood up, Lord, that you meet them at the point of their need. Some of them have special needs. I pray, dear God, that you meet those needs in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Say amen. Oh, one photo. They are saying, do you want them to come closer or you can capture? Yeah. Come closer there. And me too. All right. May I be, I should be next to the baby. Let me put the certificates here. I know this lady. Oh, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Where have you been? Oh, where have you taken photos? Look at me. I'm, dom I'm dominating the conversation now. The certificate is yours, sir. 
Thank you. May God bless you. Hey. Yeah. Would you put Ephesians 6 verse 10, 11, 12 for me? Maybe it's the right scripture I'm thinking of. Finally, brethren, verse 11. Yeah, please stand. Let's speak this scripture together. When the Bible instructs us to put on the whole armor of God, the Holy Spirit is aware that the enemy seeks to attack. He may seek to attack your life. He may seek to attack your family. He may seek to attack your home. But God says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against these categories of demonic forces. Can you see how they are arrayed there? Principalities. They are also powers. They are also rulers of darkness. And they are also spiritual wars of wickedness. These are in the heavenly places. And these seek to lodge over you. And subdue you. And destroy you. And seek to harm you. And Apostle Paul says, Put on the full armor of God. So that when the devil unleashes these, they find that they have no authority. They have no power over your life in the name of Jesus say amen yeah, I didn't plan to say this and let me go with this in life there are certain doors that you can open when you open these doors you open your life to demonic forces and therefore they attack you and when they attack you because you have opened the door, unless that door is closed, you continually begin. They continually attack you to destroy you because there's a door that's open in your life. You can open a door through your mind by believing and holding certain beliefs in your mind that are contrary to scripture and therefore the enemy comes in. But you can open a door through your mouth Mm -hmm. yeah. Job said the thing that I feared has befallen me he was verbalizing his fear so when you speak out negative things in your life you open a door and the enemy comes yeah. you can open a door by certain sins that you do in your life and the door is open it could be a door of sickness Yeah, you could be well and then you begin to do certain things that will open doors of sickness and sickness comes through. And many people rarely admit, you know what, I am in this condition because I opened the door. They will always tell you the devil, the devil. The devil has no legal right if you are protected to come into your life. But you open the door. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Oh, fuleo pumnya muena. Fuleo pumnya. For example, the Bible forbids you to be in love with a non-believer. Mm -hmm. Ah, let's stay there. The Bible forbids you to be in love with a non-believer. If you're a Christian now, you have married a non-believer. It's a covenant. We can't cut it. Stay with that person. You have to stay with them. But if that person is your boyfriend, and they don't believe like you do, you will then suffer in marriage. 
you will then bother us every Sunday. Pray for my husband. Pray for my... But you married a black mamba when you knew this was a black mamba. And you married that black mamba. And therefore you're paying a price. Some got into marriage unawares. You're not a Christian. That's fine. But some knowingly, knowingly decide to fall in love with a certain cool guy. And you pay a price. It's a matter of time. And we'll tell you, but we were teaching you in church. Why did you do what you did? Ask today the ladies and men that are married. They will wish they will go over it again and never marry the person they married. Because marriage is for life. Mm -hmm. It's for life. Ask people that are married who are so miserable today. It is because they married wrongly. They didn't take time. Lord, is this the right person for me? Because marriage is that serious. If you marry someone because they have nice legs, it is not the legs that you live with. Ah, if you marry someone because they have a nice behind, a behind jack, you are not marrying a behind. You'll be surprised. Ask the married man. How many married men after 10 years are always talking about the behind of their wives? No. Eh, no, zero. It is the character and the content in that person. It is how you interact with that person. Yeah. How many married people say, yeah, my husband is cool. Cool. Cool what? You are only cool as long as there is a boyfriend, girlfriend. Once you are married, do you provide a room? You can come in and say, I'm cool. I'm wearing designer clothes. What is designer clothes? Uh -huh. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? So there are certain doors that you open for yourself. And therefore principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wicked spirits in the highly heavenly places begin to lodge in your life and attack you. So therefore when we're praying for you is shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. If you're a child of God, you have a dude who's not born again, you're in trouble. You get attacked. And that dude is going to use you and dump you tomorrow. Yeah? And dump you tomorrow. Tomorrow you're alone. Shut the door. Tell you never shut the door. Say it again. Say, shut the door. There is a door that you have opened. Shut the door. Shut the door. Young ladies, don't be in love with a dude who is not born again. Please, I say it for your sake. You have only two years to suffer. You will suffer in two years. And I will be able to tell you, I once said this and you didn't listen. I once said that and you didn't listen. Ask a person who is married now, who married wrongly. They will tell you the pain of choosing a guy who is not Again, uh, yeah. turn around, please, and ask that person if they are single. Who are you joling with? Except, is that person born again? Is that person born again? Mm -hmm. Is that person born again? Every Sunday it's you crying. You have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice. Mm -hmm. You have a choice. Choir, you have a choice. And therefore, can I pray for those today? If you are under attack in any way, spiritually or physically, it could be attacks in dreams, attacks in your health, in your mind, you feel you're facing spiritual attacks or natural attacks. I need to pray with you quickly. Step up if you're like that. If there's no one like that, I am very happy. That means you are able to. Are you married, young lady? 
Close the door. Whatever door. Yes. Some of you may need to close certain doors that you have opened. Are you married, young lady? You are married. Where is your husband? Are we young? Yes, sir. Linja. Are you married, young lady? Where is your husband? Sierra Lord. Are you married? Yeah, close the door. Don't hang around with a dude who's not born again. You'll be in trouble. You're not married, I want to assume. Don't fall in love with the guy who's not born again. You're in trouble. You're not married. Keep on waiting for the Lord. Mom, he's not born again. You made a mistake. Are you Tore Tore married? Properly. Or is that a long creature in business? Sure. No, I assume go it So that's a where are the other sisters? Where are the other sisters? Bishop, I'm direct. Me, I'm always direct. It's better to be direct than to have chaos. Say amen. Look at the men sitting next to you and say, What do you do? We're in Zad. We're in Zad. Yeah. Are you hearing me, young ladies? Go and fix what needs to be fixed. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. Yeah, thank you. Let me, can I? We need to pray for you. You are many of you. Come, roll one, two. Come, let's pray for this. Beautiful people. We are praying for you that God helps you, sustains you, and keeps you. Yes, be leading us in a song. We're going to do a quick job, effective job over your life. So kodiare sayare Sala nena yo sakayare We are ready to pray for you Let's pray Sala sona kayare sabaro sare Sabo sana kariana nena sare bi protection of your your life in Jesus' name. Thank you for the grace. I'm not afraid. In the name of Jesus. 
this world could satisfy. Oh, Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Hey, yeah. And we sing it again and we say, who is like your Lord in all the earth? No one is like your Lord. Most holy God, matchless love and beauty endless worth. Nothing in this world could satisfy. Oh, yeah, so Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, your presence is here. Your presence, he came up a sort of Korea is here to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence, sweet, sweet spirit of the living Yes, 
Jesus, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship. There's nothing, nothing like, nothing like your presence, Lord. Your presence. All I want Shut up, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's nothing like there's your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship. There's nothing like, like your presence. All I want to see you with Lord. There's nothing like, nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to worship you. Please stand up together. Let's stand. In the next few weeks, I'll be teaching on this from this book that I wrote. Backsliding. We have so many copies of this. I'm an author of many, many books here, over 30 books that I've authored. And this one is one of them. In the next few weeks, we'll be touching on backsliding. Should you need a copy on your way out, you can just a copy of this book. It's written backsliding. Ah, don't do it. In other words, don't do it. Whatever you do, don't backslide. Say amen. All right. As we stand, shall we pray? Father, we ask that you bless your word as we teach it today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you so much, musicians. You notice we'll vary our services continually at times. We'll start with announcements. At times we'll end with announcements or offering. We just flow as we feel that way. I know it's quarter to 11, which is good. Then we can start teaching. I want us to read four verses here. Uh, in my notes there, verse 1, verse one, then seven, then twelve and fifteen. One, seven, twelve, fifteen. There are many verses there that I put, but I just need these verses. One, seven, twelve, and fifteen. Thank you so much, musicians. Backsliding is our declaration. Ways of our colleagues, you can bring the banner there. Make sure all the fans next to these saints are on so that they are not feeling. I see two fans there. Maybe make sure that, no, I was asking for this one. Does it have declarations? Oh, oh, both of them have. Mm. Right. January, February, we taught on different levels of the anointing. And now we are March, April, backsliding. All our churches globally are attacking this subject in different formats. I'm doing another format, but we're all dealing with that. When you're leading many churches, you must teach the same. Otherwise, you're growing differently. Oranges, apples, nudges, confusion. Okay, so all our leaders come and attack this. We may teach it differently. We okay, approach it differently, but at least we're dealing with one thing called backsliding. March, April. May, June, you don't want to miss this in winter. End time events and signs. That's what we'll be teaching on. End time events as well as signs. I think I wrote a book here on the end time events. I don't see it here. Maybe attached to some of these. So that's what we'll be teaching on in the next, in winter, June, July, or May, June. All right, then we come back to church planting and evangelism from their own, the mega church. Why a church must be big, not only in structure, but in size, in numbers. Church must be big, very, very big. So we must endeavor to grow this church in the next few months to make sure that it's a mega church. It has benefits and all everything else. Then we close the year, November, December. Principles of prosperity and wealth creation. 
So we are systematic. If you are attending this church, make sure you bring your pen and your paper, notebook, iPad. We will be teaching you the word of God continuously. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, if you can set these fans continually that way, or they were up there. Okay, that's fine. So that these wonderful people here will not fall asleep on me. Good. Let's start with the first verse that I alluded to. Hebrews 10, 38. It reads, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Drawing back is backsliding. The next one. Seven. Jeremiah 14, verse 17. O oh Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do it for your name's sake. For our backslidings are many. We have sinned against you. The next verse is 12. Proverbs 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. And finally, verse point 15. Point 15. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will wax cold or grow cold. And let's begin. Like in everything, once you introduce something, you need to define it. Defining issues becomes very important to any teacher of the word or any apostle. Defining issues. Definitions. What is backsliding? What is backsliding? Number one, it's called looking back. When you are going forward in the things of God and you decide to look back, you are backsliding. Many Christians backslide. Many Christians look back. Many Christians are fervent when they start serving God, but down the line, they look back. And once they look back, they are never looking forward anymore. They begin to fall away. May I start by saying this? It is very possible to be in a Pentecostal church, charismatic church, word-based church, teaching church, a church that flows in the anointing, in the power of God, and be backslidden in that church. Going to church does not exempt you from being backslidden. And that's why the Bible says, you must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. If you are to be sustained in the Lord, there is a part from you, and that part is called working out your salvation. For example, waking up in the morning to pray is working out your salvation. Waking up early in the morning to read the word of God is working out your salvation. There is too much movement here, please. If you can take your seats once you're done or unless you're going to the loo, please. Yeah, please just grab a seat and take a seat and thank you. I can't teach with so much disruption. Right? If you are coming in, we allow that movement. But if you are going out to the loo, we allow that movement too. But if you are just going out, stay put. All right, stay put so that there is order. All right, so working out your salvation implies as well, waking up in the morning to read the word of God, you are working out your salvation. That becomes very, very important. So we said number one is called looking back. When you look back, you are backsliding. Here's a scripture. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back, a 
and looking back. Placing your hand in the plow, plow on the plow, looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Once you start serving the Lord, please don't go back. Say amen. Don't go back. You are not trying Christianity. Christianity is a relationship with the living God. Once you engage in that relationship, please make sure you run the full course. Say amen. Number two, it's called turning back. Turning back. Backsliding is turning back. You were once going for it. You have decided to turn back. Lamentations 1 verse 8. Jerusalem has sinned gravely. Therefore she has become vile. All who honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns away. Turning back. No more turning back. Once you are fixed with the Lord, serve him whether you have money. Serve him whether it's winter. Serve him whether you're broke. Serve him whether your girlfriend or boyfriend has said they don't love you. There is no turning back in this thing. You serve God whether you're full of joy or no joy at all. Serve the Lord. Say amen. Number three is called drawing back. Drawing back. You are in. Don't draw back, please. Serve God until you die. Until rapture takes place, whichever comes first. Serve the Lord with all your might. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, if anyone draws back, watch what the word says, my soul has no pleasure in him. We are in this thing for life. We are not trying it. I was born again in 1977. You can do the maths for yourself. This is 2024. How many years has that been? 2024? It's how many years? How many? 47 years. <laughs> 47 years. My salvation is, is older than some of you. Yeah. 47 years. So you don't try this thing. You are in it for life. It will shape you. It will shape your family. It will shape your children. It will shape your society. It will shape your city. It will shape your nation as you serve God without giving up. But if you are one of Supenduga, 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 Uza Supa, you become in Kukumba. What is in Kukumba? In Zubenga Futwai. Eventually, you become immune to the word of God. So you must serve God without turning back. Say, Amen. So my soul has no pleasure in him. Number four, we are defining what backsliding is. Sometimes it's called sliding back. Sliding back. Sliding back. Hosea 11, verse 7. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Sliding back. My people, not certain people. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the most high, none at all exalt him. So that means they give lip service to God, but their hearts are far away. If you want to see the most holiest hour of the week, it is Sunday. Let's give him as gone up. Les febes going up. Bonka banto balapa balapa. So you will find mad people trying to be holy on Sunday and come Monday, they live like the devil himself or worse than the devil. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, Upilanja and when a Satan. Hosea 11, verse 7. 
My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the most high, none at all exalt him. In the name of Jesus. It's high time as Christians we challenge each other. Especially you, musicians. Let me talk to you. I'm coming to this group and that group and that group. It's high time you call on each other. Yeah. And say your lifestyle is not right. Yeah. Call them. Don't come and whisper to me. Call them and say, you are not living right. You are not living right. What type of a boyfriend is that one? What type of a man are you living with? What type of a man are you going out with? Begin to call on each other. Yeah. If they leave the church, let them go. I'll get more people. I'm not short of people. It's high time you call on each other. Musicians, hey, there are some secrets in the place where you are going to be quiet. There are some secrets in but you just leave it like that. Call on each other. You are your brother's keeper. Say, hey, my sister. How Billy will say better. We know you're in church. Sing out Kuzatina once, twice, yet fully, say a cheru bishop. Men and Luxas. Now keep a la panicua and we act like a own bear up a puma. Hambiating any church. Why don't you call on each other? That's not Christianity. Call on each other. Upila njad. Laura, upila gut. Upila gut. Manan topa wanning na. Mimi, upila gut. Uya zama. Uzaman. When upila gut. Upila gut. Baya zana kona baba phone kete baya zana yen kalaje is gangila. For me, don't climb my pulpit there. Don't climb my stage. Ma whiskey ben. Ma kwele la pa. Ma kwele. I'm funny la utu kwele la pa. Kwe zoga la bazaar no. Sen buya gule iro. Sen chi la ma misije. Sen chi le guatula zui whiskey ben na zones. Es kogama kauni. Kala ati whiskey ben. But call on each other. Don't wait for me to descend someone. Tell your neighbor, my mganwa, my opili gule la. During the day, during the afternoon, during the evening. Hey, hey. Can I challenge you and give you the liberty? Help your friends in the choir. Help them. Please. Even if they get angry with you, unfortunately with some of you, you are more in covenant with your friendship than with God. And therefore you leave your friends and you know them. You know them. Angi church, where is concern for your brother to say, my sister, my sister, my sister. Look at that sister next to you and say, My sister, how pili with the pillow. Ukangile, my sister. Ukange will be my sister. And my brother. My brother. Pila good. Where's the other two? My good. Me nangila fas. Ungapuma ni tiga mnyama wa musician zabui. Amane nguo zula we na zasta bure nguo zula we. Vera ngu ting. But what I look for is upile gu sangit. So from now on, as he has a license, if you know of a sister, a brother who does it, approach them and say, my sister, upile gu sela pan. Okay. Upile gu sela pan. Correct him pilo ya kola pan. Si zaku neta tina one to one singa ibe ki pezul. Si zaku pilo always two, always three. How? <laughs> What type of people are you? 
Why do you fear each other? I'm to hell. Why can't you tell each other this is wrong? This is not right. This thing is not right. Connect it. I will tell you once, twice, I will tell the bishop for your sake to help you. Manjelina, ay, 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 ay. Lie saba kumba, lan lie se nukona pa, nanti. Aha. Baba, se ngusuku misuku kwa ya. Ah, no, no, I wasn't talking about it. You are a musician? Oh, yeah, you stand up, you remain standing. Mm. I'm just talking to musicians here. Okay, I'm talking to my musicians. Never mind, I'm talking to my musicians. You love them to be straight as well while they sing there. Is that not so? Church is not a club. Mm. I say, so Yeah. So that my people see the Eh? So where is Wagala Bosses? Lavoput. Eh? Manning in Pinya. Where is Wagala Bosses? Lavopit. Will you be bold enough to warn someone, your friends? Sure. Starting when? Today. Kona Pali Puma Gona put it. I see. Joe's is be permission. When I pity with the pen, I says it was so killer. It quite young Kebi was except you row number one row. Same thing I was. What is Kebbing on this? What is Kebbing a pillar? Eh? See, I won't ask Kebbing as a cause. Eh, I live from which I is and over here was in your way again. Sometimes it's called sliding back, going back. To us, to me, friendships, genuine friendship is someone who can tell me you are in danger there. Can you watch out there? That's a true friend. A friend who keeps quiet while I'm in danger is not a friend. I don't need that friend. Get away from me. I need a friend who will make me uncomfortable. Be careful. boyfriend I write so when we are like that, the Bible says we are our brother's keeper. You are watching over me, I'm watching over you. Why are you quiet? Because that's why you are like that. Hey, whatever you do affects me. Whatever I do invariably affects you. So straighten up. Straighten up. Lina ba nyabe nasti li pema yo le peminjengwe. Hey, tell each other what you are doing is not right. Correct that. Kwe zogala ba fundi zbam. La ni lina ba tala linga hamba la machaka. Abang akundang will call on you and tell you leave this thing. Can I see those in this row that have either boyfriends or girlfriends? Lift up your hand. Let me say it again. You are, lying, you are in church, you are lying already. Can I see those that have boyfriends or girlfriends? It's not a sin to have a boyfriend, girlfriend. Let me liberate you. Can I see those that are poor friend careful? All right, stand up. Stand up. How? Come here, come here. Let me talk to you. Come, come right here. Don't sit down. Don't sit. Come, come right here. Come, come right here. Me, I'm not your father Christmas. So I'll help you. Even you, you look so young to have a boyfriend. What do you do with a boyfriend? What do you need from a boyfriend? Just turn around. <laughs> Look this side. What do you need? You're doing first year. So you, you have a boyfriend. Oh, she says she was trying to evangelize. That's how she happened to get a boyfriend. Ah. Ah. So he decided to fall in love so that he comes to Jesus. Ay. Is he here? A friend, come here. Where's the friend? Friend to, to the dude. Ah. Booyah, 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 booyah. 
he is not the boyfriend. He is the friend to the boyfriend whom you fell in love with out of sympathy. <laughs> because you wanted to win him to the Lord. Ah, you don't need to fall in love with someone. Otherwise, we will all fall in love with people here to win them. But do you love him? Really? Do you? Tell him microphone in your lap. Tell him. Oh yeah, you don't know me. Me, I will preach this way right through. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming to you. I'm crossing off. Don't worry. Here, young lady, you are a beautiful young lady, and you have destiny on you. Did I not prophesy over you sometime? You did. I did. Yes. Okay. When you are falling in love with someone, make sure you love them. And that you know that God is saying yes. Because if you fall in love with them because you, you want them to come to the Lord, ah, some kill up a singer, dope a pillar, but name about them, Tabetis Funaba, we ain't cosy. So, check that. If you feel you don't love him, dump him. Please, dump him even today. As you come out. Yeah. If there is no love inside of you, don't, do it, don't fall in love for him for the sake of Christ. No. No, no, no. Just dump him, send him a WhatsApp and say, I was with Bishop today. Bishop said, hey, dude, it's over. Yeah. If you want to go to hell, it's your problem. Uh, don't fall in love to save somebody. Christ died for us. You don't need to die for anybody. Yeah. Anybody. We love people of God. We tell them if they don't want, that's their problem. Yeah. Tell your friend that I say that. Mm. Okay. Okay. Noted. Yeah. Okay. So does he come to this church? No, he's an Anglican. He's an Anglican. <laughs> I was an Anglican too. Yeah. So please. Yeah. Do you love him or you don't love him? <laughs> Dump the guy. Mm. Where's your boyfriend? Is he here? No, he is not here. Is he there? Yes. Is he a boyfriend or a girlfriend? A boyfriend. A, bo a man. A man. How do you know he's a man? Ah. How do you know it's a man? Because his ID says he's a male. He is an ID. Yes. Anything else over and above ID? He has beard. He has a beard. <laughs> Anything else over and above beard? His parents say he's male. Uh, his parents say he's male. Is he saved? Is he a Christian? Yes. He Where is. church does he go to? Um, he goes to UCCZ. Where? Here? In no, Blur? He stays in so what do you do when you are together? When we are together. Mm. Do you kiss? No. Ah. No. Do you have sex? No. So you've have, you've have, you've have gotten answers from others. You are ready now. Where's your boyfriend? Marondela. Marondela. What is he doing there? Um, he's studying in Arts. Yeah. Okay. So. You live together? No. Okay. Yeah, I live in Marondela. But you don't live with him? Yeah, I don't live with him. I live with my cousin. Okay. All right. Yeah, la pagula ma veteran la. Where is the boyfriend? In Arare. In Arare. Really? When did you fall in love? Uh, two months ago. Two months ago. Prior to that, you had someone? No. no. Uh -huh. I had stayed single for almost six months, I think. Oh, months. six months. Is six months an achievement? <laughs> Say six months, I had stayed without someone. All right. So you are now in love with this guy. Yes, I'm getting to know him a bit better. Yeah. What do you do? We have you have sex? No. You have never had sex? <laughs> Uh, it's we're in church here. Do you have sex with him? Uh, no. We're getting to know him. Like, 
Uh, uh, they meet today, they have sex tomorrow. No, so we met recently. recently. Yeah. So you have not had time to have sex. Is that what you're telling me? No. <laughs> time, time is not available. No. Will you have sex when you have After marriage. After marriage. Sure. Where is yours? He's not here. Yes. You look shy, even as you are looking at me. You look shy. <laughs> What's his name? What's his name? Ashley. Ashley. Where did you meet Ashley? Um, in town. In town. Oh, you just met in town. And what did he say? He said, hello, you're so cute. Did he say that? No. What did he say? Uh, he said he followed me on Instagram. Ah, look at the line here. He says, baby, I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> if that's the basis of falling in love because someone follows you in Instagram, you are in trouble. So, and, and what did you say? You felt good. <laughs> but see him, what's the name of the guy? Ashley. See her with Ashley. Uh -huh. Can you see this shyness there? It's not there. <laughs> it is these young ladies that are asking these guys, when are you coming to do me? Mm -hmm. It's been long since I was done. I want you to come and do me now. It's a what's up? I am waiting for you. Do me now. Heavy. So why told you what's a bit coming to me now? You have never received that. What about a WhatsApp with a part? The whole vagina sent to you. How many have received a vagina sent into your WhatsApp? What about a jumpy? The whole full jumpy sent into your WhatsApp. Lift up your hand if you have received such. Uh, all these are lying. They send each other parts. It's difficult to pastor a church these days if you are not open and say all these things that I'm saying. You pastor James Bond, what to about to James Bond, James Bond. You'll be so happy thinking my church is full, full of nonsense too. Manam buying up. Do you live right? Who is this one? Mm. Your young sister. Ah, we are safe. Your cousin, sister, or your young sister? Uh, who is the other one? Oh, you brought your young sisters. So you like the things that I'm talking about. I know you can't talk about them, but I can talk to your sisters about these things. Hey, would you like someone to be messing up with, it, <coughs> with your sister? Mm. <coughs> All right. My people are bent on backsliding from me. Though they call to the most high, none at all exalt him. Number five. Number five. Furthermore, it is called a falling back. Falling backwards. It's always wise when you are falling to fall forward so that you are moving. Don't fall backward. Isaiah 28, 13. But the word of the Lord was to them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here, little, there, little, that they might go and not fall backward. The preaching of the word of God assists us not to fall backward. Backward. 
we must always endeavor to assist each other by challenging each other. <clears throat> Falling backward, number six. It's called defection. When you are in the army and you run away from military service, we call that defection. Revelation 2, verse 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I have this thing against you that you have lost or you have left your first love. When you got born again as a Christian, you used to love God. Songs used to mean a lot. The preaching of the word used to mean a lot. Coming to church means, me, used to mean a lot. Worshiping God used to mean a lot. Now, over time, you have lost your first love. Verse 4. You have lost your first love. Verse 4, please. You have lost your first love. First love. That pure love for God that you had. Pure love. Unpolluted love. You loved God with all your mind. With all your heart. Kaches is all mechanical. You have lost your first love. I want you to lift up your hands. And say, Lord Jesus, renew my first love. Say it one more time. Renew my first love for you. Those of you that fell in love you, with, a, with a boy or a girl, you know your first love. I mean, you can't get over that person. You want them to call you. You want them to tell you over and over again, I love you, I love you. That's the first love we had for God. We must never lose that. Always we must find that indeed we want to love him more and more and more. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have lost your first love. You may be coming to church, but you have lost your first love. You are backslidden. Mm -hmm. Verse 5 says, Remember therefore, say remember. I ah, said remember. Touch your neighbor's shoulder and say, Kumbula, remember. From where you have fallen, and the Bible says, repent. The word repent means to turn around. Repent and do the first works or else. I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Let's lift up our hands and say, Lord Jesus, I repent. Say it one more time. Say, I repent from falling away from my first love for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, definition number six, seven. A dissatisfaction with Christ and vilifying both him and his way. You were once loving God. You are now in church. If you see others that are on fire for God, you mock them. Hey, hey. Because you are backsliding, you want to pull them to your own level. Yeah, your own level is evil. And therefore, you can't stand anyone who loves God more than you. And therefore, you attack them. You create a mafia around them to attack them. You attack those that seem to be witnessing for God, that seem to be loving God, that seem to be talking about God. And therefore, you don't want to hear them. You want to persecute them. The Bible calls that dissatisfaction with Christ and vilifying both him and his way. And there is a judgment to that. John 66 verse 42 says, and they said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I've come down from heaven? They were mocking at him because he was God. They were criticizing him. At times, there's a prize among colleagues to stand up for God. They'll persecute you. Friends will persecute you. They'll pull you down. They'll talk about you. It could be in a choir. It could be among ushers. If they see you on fire, they want to cool you down like they are cooled down. Number eight. A memory and ripening against spiritual doctrine out of a rooted enmity and prejudice against it. 
the Jews then complained about him because he said, I am a Christian. I am a bread of life. I am the bread which came down from heaven. Sometimes when you say, I am this and that, people will criticize you. Why? Because they want to pull you down. Number nine, we are defining what backsliding is. A mercenary kind of spirit. What is a mercenary? These are soldiers of fortune. Those that fight for a gain. We don't serve God because of anything. We serve God because we love him. Say amen. Even if he doesn't bless us, we still love him. Even if he doesn't heal us, takes time to heal us, we still love him. Even if he doesn't provide a spouse for us, we still love him. Some people come to church for something and not for God. When you are like that, you are going to get into problems. We love God because he died for us and he loved us. I have worked with God for 42 years. I don't love him for things. No, I love him for who he is. And if we love him for who he is, our ladies and gentlemen, our Christianity is going to be sustained. One day Christ said, this is what he said. You seek me not because you saw miracles, but because you did not eat the loaves and were filled. Hey, look at your neighbor and say, why are you a Christian? Mm. The first thing, the reason why you should be a Christian is because you love Jesus Christ. I love him. Say, I love him. Say it again. Say, I love him with all my heart. Can you imagine some of you that you have children that will only say, Daddy, I love you because you gave me this. Daddy, I love you because you gave me a toy. Daddy, I love you because you bought me this. No. Children should love you regardless of what you do for them. Yeah. Equally so, we should love God because of who he is. Say amen. Number 10. Number 10. When people knowingly and willfully venture upon a way of sin, after they have received the knowledge of the truth. Hebrews 10, 26, 27. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, our hearts get hardened and it becomes difficult to turn away. Say amen. Hebrews 10, 26, 27. Verse 27 says, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Verse 11. I've been mean point 11. A fall back into some puddle of wickedness which they seem to have escaped. When we come to God, we escape sins. Certain vices that hold us we are free from them. But after some time, we want to go back to those things. Those vices. Going back is a sinful nature. Second Peter 2, 20, 21. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again, say again, entangled in them and overcame, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Stand with me. Let me explain something so that you don't fall asleep on me. When salvation comes to your life and you are delivered from the power of sin, the devil is not happy that you have been delivered. So he seeks to find a way to get you back. He sees your life as his house. He was living in that house. Now he's been saved, noticed, and evicted by God. He is now out of your life. But he is not far away from your life. He is out of your life, but watching you. Watching the day you will open a door for him to come in. Once a door is open, he calls not only his friends, but many of his colleagues to come and say, that house is free now. Let's get in. That's why people who backslide 
find it difficult to come back to the Lord. Because the Bible says the last state of that person is worse than the beginning. And therefore the devil comes in to fortify into your life. And therefore you find that the vices that hold you are greater than the vices that held you before you came to the Lord. And it becomes worse. It becomes worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. If you're a young guy, you had one girlfriend and you got born again and you went back, you have now 27 of them. Yeah. <clears throat> if you used to have sex once a week, you will have sex seven times a, week, a day. Because the appetite is greater. If you're sitting next to a single person there, ask them, have you ever had sex before? Don't ask the married. That's your single. Say, I'm not wanting you to laugh. I want you to answer. Uh, she's saying, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Oh, you don't remember. Ah. One of the vices that hold all of us as men is the love for sex. And women too. So when you pass the young people like this, hormones are raging. Mm. That's why they're quiet here and they don't talk when I touch the subject. Everybody freezes. Yeah. Hormones are raging. The sexual desires among young people are high. Brigadier, very high. Mm -hmm. Both ladies and men, but more so young guys. Ask that single person and say, when do you think you will have sex next? Ask them and say, do you consider God when you are having sex? Snowy, when did you last have sex? Eh? You don't remember. <laughs> but you had sex. Ah, so you can't remember the time. I know. It's not honest. You always remember when you had sex. Eh? Hey, I'm making people very uncomfortable. And I'm doing it deliberately so that you feel that. And therefore, when the enemy comes in, the vice is greater. You can come out of it. You will find it very difficult to come out of it. And that's why when you shut the door, shut it. Try by all means to keep it shut. Tell your neighbor, shut the door, shut the door. Mm -hmm. Shut it. Keep it closed. Because once you open it, we have a there are certain vices that you can easily come out of. There are certain vices that you can't. That you'll find it very difficult to come out of those vices. And one of them is sex. Sex is a powerful thing. But if you didn't know, it gets difficult to break out of it. Nanji, it gets difficult. You know, isn't it? Are you not an expert? <laughs> Noli? Is it easy or not? No. Yes, no. Is it easy to come up? I guess not. Is it easy? It's not easy. It's a vice. So once you have tested, very difficult. So Shut the door. Tell you the musician next to you, shut the door. 
crazy, shut the door. Ah. Even you, dog, shut the door. I remember, but it's because it's too mature. In fact, the more they get mature, the more they get dangerous. And, uh, <laughs> For if after they have escaped pollutions of the world through knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. And then the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. Verse 21. Verse 21. Ah, is that a combination of 20 and 21 there? While you stand, seven warnings against backsliding. Seven warnings against backsliding. Every one of us should examine our lives continually. None of us is immune to backsliding. No preacher, no bishop, no apostle, no prophet is immune to backsliding. So all of us are susceptible to this. All of us. Some in smaller measures, some in greater measures. We are giving you warnings against backsliding. Here is warning number one. The focus of your heart changes from the things of God to the things of the world. Slowly, you will find that the interest in God is going down. Deuteronomy 1, 27 to 36. And you complained in your tents and said, because the Lord hates us, he has brought us out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy. When you change your focus from God to the things of the world, if you read the whole scripture there, you will see what happened in the backslidings of the children of Israel. They backslid. Let's look at Solomon. Solomon became a man who's still on point number one, who loved the Lord. Here's what Solomon did. Solomon walked with God according to his statutes. Solomon built a temple. Three, he experienced God's love and grace. Four, Solomon was given spiritual understanding. And Solomon wrote many books. But watch the demise of Solomon. He sought power. He wanted a drive, a wealthy success. He desired to accumulate wealth in an abnormal way. And Solomon had a thousand ladies in his life. One thousand. You have one. Solomon had two thousand. One thousand. And therefore he began to tolerate idolatry. Please take your seats. I know you have been standing for some time. Number two, you become more concerned about yourself rather than the things of God. Worship, service to God, other people. That's a warning that you are backsliding. John 6, 26, 27, the scripture that you read. It reads, Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not. Because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves, bread. When you look for God because I want a husband, I want a wife, I want things, I want a car, I want... Then you know your heart is not with God. You are backsliding. Philippians 2 verse 21. For all seek their own, 
not the things which are Christ Jesus. Matthew 22, 36, 39. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 39 gives it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But the first one, 38, is to love God with all your heart. When you begin to please yourself and forget God, then you're in trouble. No concern for lost souls. When you are a Christian and people that are not born again don't concern you, that should be a sign that something is falling apart. No concern for lost souls. Number three. You no longer have a passionate love for God and his work. Psalm 18 verse 1 and 3. David was passionate about God. A psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song. Give us verse 2. You see the passion of David. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He was passionate about God. Passion for God is key. Psalm 119, verse 16. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. David is on fire for God. Hosea 6 verse 1. Come, let us return to the Lord. For he has torn us, but he will heal us. Returning to the Lord is key. What else is a sign of backsliding? Your time with God dwindles. It goes down. You hardly can read your Bible. Church attendance is erratic. Your giving is next to nothing. Your heart is not in the things of God. Those are signs. Signs, signs, signs. Number four, you quench the voice of the spirit. God tells you on the inside, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right. But you kill that voice, continually kill that voice. Within us, ladies and gentlemen, there is a voice. Once you are a child of God, there is a voice that speaks to you. If you lie, that voice says, you lied, you lied, you lied, you lied. If you continue to drown that voice, eventually you become immune to the voice. The voice stops speaking to you. However, John 16 verse 30, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you, on the inside of me, speaks to us. And we do well to listen because he guides us. Number C, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the spirit. He keeps on talking to you. That thing is not right. 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 He will keep on speaking to you until you yourself successfully quenches the spirit. And you no longer hear him speaking to you anymore. Number five. Your lifestyle becomes more sinful rather than more holy or pure. You know you're backsliding. First Corinthians 6, 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites will inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are these, or evident, which are adultery, fornication, 
uncleanliness, lewdness, more idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, amapati, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Put back Galatians 5. Let's go over it again. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. They, they are one by one. Let's break it down. What is adultery? It is when a married person has sex with someone. Adultery. The second one is fornication. It is two people that are not married having sex together. The next one is uncleanliness of mind and spirit. Whatever crosses your mind, be it porn, pornography, or dirty stuff that crosses your mind, that is a form of uncleanliness. Lewdness. Idolatry is not literally worshipping an idol, but anything that you equate to or put above God is idolatry. It could be your kids, it could be your husband, it could be your boyfriend, it could be your car, it could be your cloth, it could be your hairdo. Anything that you equate to God or put above God is idolatry. And the list goes on. There's hatred, contentions. There are Christians that hate each other. Ababunan, but the church one. choir one, they hate each other. They're sitting same row, they don't like each other. They will tell you, so and so, yam zonda, I yam zonda. There are people that leave church because they don't like someone in church. Can you imagine? Church is a hospital. Whatever church you go to, you will always find bad people in church. In fact, if you don't, you'll be the first bad person to arrive in that church. Mm -hmm. Church is like a hospital. We're all progressing. We're working progress. That's why we challenge each other unto good works. Mm -hmm. So you can't run away because you hate people. You must learn to love people. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, I really appreciate you, my brother, my sister. Mm -hmm. Um, how? Jealous. People are jealous. They can be jealous of you because of the way they perceive you look or the way they think you have some stuff that they don't have and therefore they become jealous. Treat your heart. Teach your heart to wish well for others. Practice a pelambon. Turn around and say, Mganwam, May God bless you the more. May God increase you. Next, 21. Envy. Umkhao. Murder. You wish someone was dead. You are murdering them. Drunkenness. Hey, la power uh-huh when were you last drunk some are drunk even this morning when were you last drunk when did you last drink light Which part were you in last, last night? Last week? And the Bible says, I tell you of these things. Like I say, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's called backsliding. Number six. When you want to know the sign of backsliding, you don't want to come to church. Your church attendance becomes less important to you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I teach you a principle? Church is like belonging to a family. 
When you are going to go away for one week, you tell others, I will be away. Please don't look for me. I'm going to Harare. I'll be in Gweru. Be accountable. Hey, hey. disappear three months. Zavona, oh, sorry. Three months you have disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine your kids walking out of your home for three months and say, come back. Hello, Daddy, we're back now. Three months gone. Church is a family. Tell your member, say, church is a family. Mm -hmm. Where were you last week? <laughs> Where were you last week? <laughs> we, heard, we heard that this sister was in Ghana. She just left and went to Ghana. You just decided to leave and go to God. Don't you think it's normal to tell others I'm going? Hey. It's very important if you're in a family. It's called accountability. You're in a choir. You disappear. He led you. Aha. So you are in a choir. There is a leader. You are singing. Nothing tells you I must tell my leader I, I'm going away. And then when you come back, you want to fit in straight? No, I'm asking. You want to get back? To the same leader that you never told that you're going on. Ah. You go with Tanya Roma musicians, ain't you? This is madness. I have never seen such madness. Even in your home, you can't do that. Disappear, you come back. That's why I tell you, musicians, you are your brother's keepers. If you're in my choir and you did that, I'll never put you in choir. You never sing. Because, number one, you don't respect me as a leader to tell me. If you don't respect me as a leader, where, where am I going with you? Or your pastor, for example, I'm a pastor here to say, Bishop, I'll be going away for one month, two months. I'm your pastor. I. I'm meeting on your phone. I'm showing you by. What to let's we. Mobi Chesi Kulama Zang, can't he? Church is full of foolishness. It's only in church where you find all foolishness that that somebody failed to deal with somewhere there. It comes here. So umele min until la yole foolishness. If you have a leader above you, when you are going somewhere, tell that leader. It's a it's a sign. Ubuntu lobe. Forget you, Christ. Ubuntu nje. Ubuntu nje says there's something wrong with you. There are some principles that you need to relearn in your life. You notice I care more about you than you attending this church. So if this offends you, feel, oh yeah, I might go, go. But I would rather pastor you, taking you to a right place than tolerating your rubbish. Yeah. You understand this? Yeah. Not forsaking the assemblings of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. The last point that we deal with before we go home. You no longer respond to altar calls. Mm. You no longer respond to altar calls. I'm 
May I say this? If I'm pastoring you here, and in a car, I'm not going to my basic principles, you will find me a little bit very hard. Because in Zagufun, this is in Togo for Nutu Bakufun is a son and Kai. Hmm. Eh, Mobagnongas Funzong, we are Lapa Lusanya Wako, eh, so is a Sanya Pen. Hmm. Some of these are basic things that someone at home should have taught you to say, hey, whenever you are in a place and you are you're doing this and that and that. I, I had a certain lady in our church here. She got married. Well, I didn't know. Hey, pictures. I'm going to picture. Where is Asha? I said, Asha. She got married. I saw it on Facebook. I saw it on Facebook. Somebody said, I see it. No, 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 no. She, she, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't, she wouldn't do that. No, no. I said, no, I think it's just a picture. Uh, maybe it's a photo. Photo. What do you call it? Photo. Yeah, Photoshop. Maybe it's, uh, yeah. Mm. Somebody said, no, no. I said, never, never. Not that one. Not that. She greets me every morning. Hey, not that one. She will never do that. I said, but me. I said, never, never, never. It was true. She just, just decided to go and get married. All of us were shocked. I'm a basic I have another food to encounter with now charter. Jela Pela Bato Suntala would say a chat. They are nodding their heads. Some of them are about to do it. Gonna pay. Look at Jenny Pet say when as well as you chat to say to say very soon you'll be mm. <laughs> another one I saw a honeymoon by the beach. Uh, by the beach. Ah, Bishop, sorry, I forgot to tell you. We got married, now we are at honeymoon. Me and my... Come. Another one I met in the plane. I was in the same plane, plane from Chopek to here. And I happened to sit in the... I said, I haven't seen you in church. Ah, Bishop, sorry, I forgot to tell you. We are coming from honeymoon. With who? This is the man. Who is he? Ah, yeah, he is my boyfriend. So we got married. Yeah. So, Bishop, you must be happy. She shows Mary. Since you're always preaching about marriage, here we are. <laughs> Crazy people in church. Only in church do you find mad people. No, we didn't want to disturb you, Bishop, because you're a busy man. So we just decided to get married. And this is the ring. And this is the man. I said, who is the man? Mm. Guess who was the man? The man was not vetted by anybody. The man was married. Aha! She's alone now. She lives in Harare. He's our member. Yeah. The man said, sing a chelabantu. As we try and fast, 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 fast. The man is married. She's a very light, light in complexion, the lady. As light as her, more lighter than her. Mm. Got married. And is the dude who said, let's do it fast. And she said, yeah, Joe, sing about change. It's about surprise, oh, Bishop. Saying surprise, they're planning. Ah, move and do. So when you just found her. And the person who married them is in trouble. Because the guy had said, uh, he's, he's single. The guy is from UK. He's single. The guy had left a lady. <laughs> so you no longer respond to altar calls. Second Samuel 12, verse 1 and 13. Please look at your neighbor and say, I hope, I hope, I hope you are saying you are single and, and that's true. And I hope you are not married. <laughs> In our church here, I have helped many people that were almost marrying someone who's married. Many. Some were almost right at the brink. When I said, let me check, I found USA. And said, I have a dude here who speaks American. Ah, oh, pastor. <laughs> sitting there, oh, pastor, how are you? And so forth, I love your data, pastor. 
Pastor, when I hit that accent, I just felt like vomiting. Oh, Pastor, you know when it's fake. Pastor, Pastor. So I said, yeah, let's forget Pastor, Pastor. You're old. And this lady is young. Where were you? She says, Pastor, I was studying medicine, Pastor. It takes long, Pastor. I said, you're over 40, Pastor. Mm -hmm. You're over 40. Where were you all along? You look like an old man. It says, studies, studies kept me. Pastor. Yeah, pastor. <laughs> I knew I had a con man there. Because my pastor, my tackle was being thrown all over. Pastor, pastor. I said, uh, are you sure you don't have a, 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 a wife? No, pastor. How can I love your pretty, pretty daughter like that? My pretty daughter was in love. In fact, my pretty daughter was angry with me. Why I was asking these questions. Just like some of you we are angry as I, as I talk to you. Now for me, I don't care. Yeah, I passed that stage to please you. I just tell you. I have many churches. If you go, I will replace you. Mm -hmm. So I'm good thing. It is to your benefit that you come here. If you didn't know that. Yeah. Because if you leave, I put somebody else. If I'm short of musicians, I can go and steal Mama Nyati's choir, half of the choir, and bring it here to come and sing for me. So there is nothing that you can do that can ever hold me at ransom. If I'm short of ushers, I can go and close one branch and say, I need ushers here. Mm. So that's how powerful I am at this point. Here. That's why I'm able to preach rough. But to jail, we are preaching. We are preaching. Unless no one chooses to believe Satan, but no one believes in So I said to this young lady, she's sitting there. She's a pretty, pretty lady. Young lady. Uh, she's seen this old man. So I'm saying, say, you're very old. Hey, where were you all along? Our oh, pastor was starting. I said, I was starting too. I have many doctorates. I have many degrees. Hey, but I'm married. <laughs> I have many degrees. Yeah. By the way, if you didn't know, I have many degrees. Mm. So, where were you? He says, you can even ask. Now he plays a bluff on me. You can even phone my pastor in the USA. Ah, big mistake. You pick, he has the number. If you so wish. I was supposed to say, ah, no, that's fine. I said, give me the number. He says, you sit down here. and Give me the number. Huh? Some genuine American answer. Hello, pastor. How are you? I tell him. I'm bishop so-and-so. I have your son here. Your son is called so-and-so. He wants to marry my daughter. Silence like there was silence in heaven. Quiet. I said, hello, are you still there? He said, did you say so-and-so? Yes, I know he's in Zimbabwe there. Is he wanting to marry you? I said, yes. They're together here in my office. He says, no, bishop. His wife and kids are here. Please look at that man and say, I don't trust you until you are proven right. I do here. You are very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Hmm? This little girl was angry with me as to why I was asking this question. She wanted me to rub a stem. Afterwards, she comes, my father, I said, get away from me. My father, I said, you didn't support me when I was trying to fight for your life. Ah. And therefore, my question is, who are you jolling out with? Who is your boyfriend? Can you introduce your boyfriend with pleasure to someone and say, this is my boyfriend? Who is your boyfriend? Who is your girlfriend? Who is your girlfriend? Oh, You were meant to introduce me to, to your girlfriend. You told me about it. Where, where are you, mom? Where are you? Who's it? Who can answer? Who uh, he 
You don't seem to be happy. But I asked. Did you hear me asking? Why did you sit down? Is this your boyfriend? You will love him. Ah, no, I mean, I go going to double check. That's all I can say. Double check that. Verify that. Maybe in problems. Double check that. Yeah, I leave it to you. Me, I'm not a fixer of boyfriend, girlfriends, but I'll leave it to you. A person that you stand up and look for. If my girlfriend is in there and I have a girlfriend, I say, hey, who's my, she must be happy with me. Hey, you're my dude, my dude, you're my dude, my dude. There may be a problem with her. You may face problems. But hey, Okuli, let's know. You know what I'm saying, Kati? You can sit down. Something wrong. problem. She's left, can you see? Huh? We are being in love with the gift. It's a staging. We are going to sing, sing, sing. But the person who loves you will stand up for you. You will never understand these principles that I'm sharing until you come to the... Okay. You don't understand. When you want a boyfriend or girlfriend, would you circle for that? So possibly it's the Holy Spirit's knowing that he has helped you. I don't know, but you can deal with that. That's your, that's your issue there. Mm. If you are not proud of me as your pastor, and you don't say, Bishop, I'm not your pastor. But if, if I meet you and you are going with someone and say, this is my bishop, then I'm your bishop. Are you hearing me? After all, so uh, get away from me. <laughs> On the contrary, you need to be siding with me because you need me. Young Eh, but you want to die? Just in general, a church, and you are referring to me. I will tell you, don't come to my church again. Get away. Go and find another pastor that you are proud of. Yeah. So you no longer respond to altar calls. Response to altar calls means your heart is tender. We're closing now. That's the last thing. Stand. Let's go. Let's get, get ready to go. Remember, we haven't collected the offering. You no longer respond to altar calls. A certain man after last Sunday came to me, or oh, last Sunday, and said, Bishop, I wasn't in church when I when, uh, when you responded to my request to go and check a certain lady, whether she's the right lady. Because I came back and said, the lady is not right for you. This lady will walk away from you. She's too fast. Strong as well. Too strong. Mm -hmm. from afar. And therefore, I would tell you what you do with that information is up to you. Uh -huh. A certain lady came to me and said, uh, 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 I, this is the man. And so I said, this man is, is wrong for you. Don't marry this man. I only say that when I feel the spirit of God telling me. I don't just go about falling in, into people's relationships. That's their relation. I said, young lady, don't fall in love with this man. 
Yeah, this man will give you problems. Oh, the lady refused. She says, Bishop, we are married well. Yeah, I said, not this one for you. This one will give you major problems. In three months time, three solid months after marriage, yeah, the man was now bringing not one girlfriend, many girlfriends in the house. I told, don't marry this man. This man is not right for you. That's why it's very important that when you have friends or fatherly figures or motherly figures in your life, introduce your, your future spouse. Mama, your mother, even though she never went to school, will intuition, the experience. Don't marry this one. This one is wrong for you. She cried and cried the lady and wrote me a letter. Bishop, you told me she would not listen. I went to her three times. Three times. So always, if you are uncertain, you meet a woman or a man. Find someone, not necessarily me. That's not my job to be calling on your relation. Find someone that you respect and say, what do you think? Amen. They will help you. Amen. Because marriage is a contract and when you come out of it, it leaves you with bruises. Submit that relationship. Snowy had come to me last week and said, Bishop, I will introduce you to my girlfriend. I've forgotten I'm preaching here and I'm just touching this and I'm pointing out. And there's a lady walking away from a future man. Ha! Ha! If I were you snowing at Tingomunye, Baneng is snowing, Nasuman Chai Felapana, but we have three Mbesen Ketawan. I'm telling you. Tingomunye. We are told I'm a big council angel, so church. You don't find it, isn't it? Hey, people are scared. So, so many are jail. Nanja helped her. This is the lady. This is the lady. Did I not help you? Come here, let's talk. As you wouldn't end up. Each church you may see, Dale Gushibas, I'm paying my Christmas Nanja. Nanja brought a dude to me. Because I'm praying for her that she finds dude. Like I'm praying for all these ladies. Brought a dude to me. After just talking to the dude, I said, this dude is not right for you. Hmm. What did you find out? Yeah, the stories that happened after that. I think Summarize it. Days you told me, but so that they know I'm not lying. Summarize it. <laughs> Summarize it. They have no time. They are hungry. Summarize it, Nanchi. <laughs> uh, days after he met Bishop, he almost tried to kill me. They tried to kill. Not yeah. my emotions, but physically. Physically. So. I'd say that's not the right guy for you. It takes not wanting to be loved by people. If you're one pastor that's looking for love, uh, you will tell people lies. Uh, this dude was coming from uh, one of the most powerful nations of the world. Mm. She thought by meeting me, and coming from there, I would be so shivering. I said, that's not the right guy for you. Mm. So, he wanted to kill you. Yes, he actually mm. tried to. He tried to kill you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who would want to kill Nanji, surely? <laughs> Walk away from Nanji. Don't kill Nanji. Exactly. Who would want to kill you? Which man loves you and wants to kill you? It just pays to submit your relationship to leaders. It will help you. My wife, when I fell in love with her many years ago, she said, you know, if you love me truly, come and see my leaders. Yeah, she said that. She says, look, you and I have talked. I love you. You love me. But let's take it higher. Come and see my leaders. My leaders will sit down with you and ask because my leaders know my call. Come and see my leader. So I went. I went. I passed. Mm -hmm. 
the leaders show me, if a dude is afraid of seeing your leader saying, oh, it's between the two of us, let's not involve others, you will involve others when you are divorcing. You would want to involve me. Mm. She nearly got killed. But Nanji was in love with the dude. Head over heels. I don't want to say more. I wish I had liberty to say more. Nanji was totally in love. Completely in love. When, when brown women love, their love turns to foolishness. Hey, Today, I could have said, you know what, I don't want to, do. I'm praying for this lady. Now if I say this and, but I just said, hey, I don't care. She may be angry, but this is what I'll tell you. This guy is, even after telling her, she didn't break it, she went ahead. And that's when she nearly got killed. <laughs> Are you together with the dude? No, I'm not. You are not together. No, we're not. What about if he comes now? No, no, Bishop. He's tried many times. He's tried many times. You closed the chapter. It's done. Yeah. You felt to close it? It, it was done then. It was done then. Yes. After all, the three days after. Uh, three days after. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But then you church it up. How? <laughs> you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it may not necessarily be me, but your mother, especially your mother or your father. Just submit that relationship. If you're a young lady, go to your mom. Mom, can you go out for lunch with this boyfriend of mine when I'm not there? Just talk to him. Your mother will tell you things because of experience. It's not the anointing, just the experience that just tells you, uh-oh. Uh, because we know we have been at it before. What you are doing, what you are struggling with, we struggled with many years ago. So we can help you. Mm -hmm. Assist you. But when I have any assistance, I basalan. Asam benin kai. Pagam sa nizan. Yeah. Say, Lord Jesus. Today, I've heard your word concerning backsliding. I now open my heart and ask you to soften my heart, tenderize my heart. Help me, Lord, to respond to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that you continually deal with my backslidings. Where I failed you, soften my heart that I may repent. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take your seats. Thank you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's offering time. I trust that you brought your tithes and your offerings in the next five minutes, ten minutes, we should be out of here. And may God bless you. The trunks are coming through.